I don't know if you guys can see that, but there's a building in the background right there. It's not really a good view, but um, I'm trying to get back to my vehicle at the moment. But uh, I'm in downtown Colorado Springs, actually. I don't know if you could actually see um, a little bit of the buildings. There's kind of a thing in the way there. But I'm here in downtown Colorado Springs. And just taking a little trip. Um, did I say downtown Colorado <laughs> Downtown Denver. I'm in downtown Denver. Um, and to give you an idea of what downtown Denver and Colorado Springs, it's about roughly about an hour away from each other. So um, it's kind of a bit of a drive. Um, if you're worried about money and mileage and all that. Um, on top of that, my appointment was at a location that was actually beyond Denver. So, um, I thought about in this video, this is really on the spot video, so sorry, these are not scripted or, you know, fast or, you know, because I know people don't like long videos, but this is actually going to be a video, man, this is a long cross line. Um, this video actually isn't, go, is going to be about the lore of Southman, and you know, there's been some lore videos out. So first, we have two categories, pre-war and post-war. So pre-war, I got the tone, the cone, I got the, the terminology from the Fallout games. Well, that happens before the post-nuclear nuclear war. And so far, it's been that one video called Quarantine Colorado Springs. I actually re-uploaded the video because I took it down, uh, and I explained why that happened. But it's actually also AKA called Doom on the Horizon. Um, is what the original name is, but I just decided to kind of change it a little bit and play with the title. Is this ever going to change so I can walk across? Um, okay. Should I do a, should I do a, a what do you call this? It's called a, Oh man, it's 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 cold. Too big for Colorado is not a good thing. Um. Anyway, by the way, it's kind of spooky here in Denver, Colorado, um, especially at night. Um, it's getting a little iffy, and I decided to go do something crazy. I went to a little burger stand or a custard stand out in the middle of the street in an area that looks kind of like the ghetto. And I sat down in a chair, and this really tells you I got some nerves here. But I sat down, and I had myself a burger and french fries and some custard without any fear. Uh, I think it's about to turn here. Uh, please turn. Please turn. Please turn. Send go. Really? Okay, I'm thinking about uh, I'm thinking about jaywalking because I don't think that's going to work. So, do something dangerous. I should be talking at the same time and doing this. Yep, we're jaywalking. Here we go. By the way, that's that's downtown Colorado Springs, right there. If you can see it, it's kind of like distance. In the distance over there, that's downtown. Not downtown Colorado Springs, downtown Denver. So, um, so what I was saying is my lore videos are that, and that's one example. And then you have post-war, which are kind of like the post-apocalyptic Colorado Springs video all that one um, and so those are examples of videos that I have uploaded to YouTube and deal with lore and I love to do that because what I'm trying to do is establish the lore of the South Main universe um, that is probably the third pre-war video you have seen so far of South Main because there's been some pre-war videos but they have been you know, videos before the nuclear apocalypse, 
but they were in episodes. So you had episode 5, well, you had the recollection in between 3.5, um, and then you had uh, some of those. So those were examples of, ooh, those are examples of lore videos. Um, and they are, they're examples of them. And basically, <laughs> a lot of times when we do any pre-war footage or pre-war videos, we like to make it where it's kind of like, excuse me, I got the belches. <laughs> We're trying to make it like, basically, um, man, I just cannot think. I apologize. We're trying to make it like, um, I don't know how to explain it, but we're, we're trying to make it, um, man, I just cannot think. Uh, that's why it's hard to do unscripted videos, because you just can't think about what you're trying to say. Um, I don't know if you ever encountered that. And also I'm cold and I'm walking at night. But... Yeah, um, they're supposed to be, oh yeah, they're supposed to, the pre-war videos are almost like, like found footage, if, if you know what I mean by that. Like, so videos from, that were taken, obviously taken by, on a phone or something like that. Um, somebody had a cell phone or camera and they took video of the war before. Well, that's how we do it. So we combine a lot of Southman episodes where you have, not a lot of episodes, you have episodes where you have the Southman video, but then you have like pre-war footage of something happening before the war. It's just the way we do it, it's kind of like this pre-war footage, it's almost like these found videos or footages that somebody found. Well, the Jim on Horizons example that, and it's it revealed that the CIA found it, which is interesting. It makes you wonder, how does the CIA have found it? Hey, by the way, before I continue, see, you like this jacket? Look at this jacket. Look at that. Look at this sexy jacket. This jacket is actually going to be the new Southman jacket. Just the spoils and things. Um, I wish you could show the whole jacket. It's kind of hard doing it like this, but yeah, so that's going to be the new South Male jacket. Under with the older jacket right here. It's actually strunked up because what happened is I put it in the washer. Um, you got to be careful putting um, basically leather in washer. In the old South Men episode, you know, South Men jacket seen for episode 6. Well, that thing is strunk and it's so small now um, that... <laughs> you can barely there's some crazy people out, out here actually so it's kind of good to talk to you guys um oh what was I going to say yeah you, 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 you it's shrunk up and when I put it in the dryer it just made it worse um and now it's like a kid's jacket um so those are some examples of some of the some of the changes that are going to happen South Man this jacket you had to be able to look forward so while i was in denver i decided to actually do a pre-war uh, another pre-war footage video where southman is in denver apparently colorado and he's trying to get back to colorado springs now the reason why he's trying to get back to colorado springs is because he well basically he's been on vacation and now he's trying to get back to Colorado Springs and get back to a city that is quarantined, which quarantine is actually a very good thing um, in the lore behind the events that have happened. But when episode seven releases, it's actually finally gonna show the the in order timeline to the South Mean universe, like starting from the first year or the first events that happened, and it's going to kind of explain the origin behind the apocalypse and stuff. So that's pretty much what Southman's going to be, we're going to be doing with Southman. This looks like somebody had some problems. 
so anyway yeah um that's that's one example so what i wanted to talk about too in this is i haven't really done much of it i know i did it in the legend video if you already seen that i gotta re-upload it or re-edit it and re-upload it like i mentioned for the editing it's really not that big of a deal it's not a big process um but i'll have to re-edit it and re-upload it um so the editing for um the the editing for that one um, for the uh for the legend needs to be uploaded but um these these things deal with locations what's really cool about the legend video so far as well as the you know the newt or i called it fallout go colorado springs or you could say um was it fallout colorado springs or post-apocalyptic colorado springs that was the the title i gave it well i wanted to talk about some of the lore that is behind that and i've already addressed it in those videos and you need to watch them they're very interesting and i've addressed basically the different lores behind locations in the south main universe um if you ever notice a lot of a lot of short films post pilot short films i've ever seen on the internet they deal with one location and one location only well what's unique about south end is they don't just deal with one location it deals with traveling across post-apocalyptic America, which is, which is a very unique way of going about it. And it's unique because, you know, we get to see more than one location. Also, what's really unique is that all these locations or areas in post-apocalyptic um, post-apocalyptic America are actual locations that I'm actually at when I'm filming. Not always, but most of the time. So when we begin the series, it took place in post-apocalyptic Oklahoma. Then suddenly it jumped in time and we, when we were uploading things, it jumped in time and it now was in Colorado, post-apocalyptic Colorado. Well, the series, when South Man travels, as you know, he's trying to find his nephews in post-apocalyptic Colorado. Well, first in Oklahoma, and then he finds out they're not there, and then he, you know, here's the radio signal that says, you know, there's shelter in Colorado, so he goes that way. But when he's in post-apocalyptic, um, those two areas, he's traveling a route, and the route he takes is basically through Texas and then through New Mexico. So he goes from Oklahoma through parts of New Mex uh, Texas and then through New Mexico and then to Oklahoma. Um, I chose a route that I drive. It's actually the route that I drive to get to Oklahoma and then back to Colorado, um, those two locations in real life. So... It kind of makes sense and I just thought it was kind of cool that would be where he's walking through and it also has two unique those yeah four locations have unique ways that apocalypse is different for those two areas so kind of like the fallout series was kind of like that right so starting with post-apocalyptic um, Oklahoma and we actually really you know, some of these short, short films don't even define the location. But uh, post-apocalyptic Oklahoma has been described in the legend video as well. And um, yeah, in the legend video, it's been described as an ancient plane or something like that, uh, which makes a good description for that. Um, so it's like an ancient plane. And... The ancient plane is, oh, it looks like something from an old, like, old Fallout game or something. Anyway, um, it basically, sorry, I get distracted. <laughs> um, it basically 
is a ancient plain, southern ancient plain, or something like that. And Oklahoma post apocalyptic. Ooh, that's creepy. You want to see this, guys? I'm sorry. I'm trying. I keep getting distracted. Look at that. Look at that. Look how creepy that is. Is there a ghost in there? Ooh, is there a ghost in there? Man, that could be a ghost. Okay, we're getting out of here. <laughs> What's all ghosts? No, I'm just kidding. So, anyway, um, post apocalyptic Oklahoma is described as that. And it's a location where there's not many people left. And the people who are the things that are left are nuclear creatures which we haven't fully got into description of who they really are in reality. Um, and then, oh, look at this. Guys, I keep getting distracted. Look at that, that's like a camera shop. Like old cameras. Look at that, guys. Hold on. I'm not supposed to, I'm supposed to be talking about South Man. I'm being so distracted downtown. This is so cool, look at that. Look at that, that's like old, it's like old cameras. See that? That's neat, man. That's neat. Anyway, where were we? So, um, post-apocalyptic Oklahoma is kind of like that. It's a ancient plane, nuclear creatures roam, which we really haven't described what they are yet. And then there's like tribals. Um, the government, there's no government system it's kind of broken down and it's a tribal system and so there's like no government there's no nothing and it's just tribal um, and then the people that are left there's some still uh, deciding to take shelter um, staying underground below the surface so they they actually still stay below the surface they might go outside once in a while for supplies or whatever but they decide to live below the surface so it's an interesting area. Um, and in the South Man series, it really kind of spokes true because there's really not a lot of people in post-apocalyptic Oklahoma. You don't see it. Colorado seems the same way too. But then we have him start traveling to find his nephews in Colorado. Well, this trip, so far we have touched on post-apocalyptic Texas. And it's been so very brief. Post apocalyptic Texas is described as a place that, uh, what's the word? Post apocalyptic Texas would be best described. Um, well, it's not really described that much. <laughs> so, the, the storyteller is what we call him in the legend video. He actually describes post apocalyptic Colorado, or I'm not Colorado, post apocalyptic Texas as like a place where there's like maybe camps of survivors so apparently him and his family and other families or others were actually post living in a survivor camp and you know the survivors of the apocalypse they're like living in a camp together so there's a little community and um south man and his dog protected them from wasters so the wasters um, as that video has, did show, the Wasters are actually referring to um, those guys that showed up in episode 6. That shot at me, remember, and they started shooting mortars, mortar fire, started shooting at me and my dog. Well, those are described as, would be best described as the post-apocalyptic, um, or as the, the Wasters. The Wasters are kind of like the Raiders, you know, from the Fallout games. Or you can think of the Mad Max bad guys, the crazy Mad Max bad guys. Um, in Shadowlands Grant series, uh, they're kind of close to, uh, I think it's Mart, Mara, Mar, Mar, I don't remember their names. It's kind of loud. So uh, that would be, that would be who they are. They're barbaric and stuff. And that's all the way he describes Texas. There's this guy around a campfire, storyteller. There's kind